Oh, there? there's an auction. After driving around the whole suburb, we were only able to see a quarter of the stock that was available. And the same effect is seen in Greater Tamworth, where stock continues to pile up. But there's nothing wrong with Kalala or Tamworth in general. It's just a good example of an Australian town with ample habitable land on the urban fringe. Look at all that land. Suburbs not finished yet. Plenty of room. Plenty of room for more houses. Plenty of room for more houses. Where overpriced nascent housing estates struggle in a war against a rising tide of established housing stock. The same signs of existing stock piling up can be seen, or rather, won't be seen. Not a sign to be signed. <laughs> yeah, that's good. In large suburbs of Greater Melbourne, such as Point Cook, with its Paragon development, with 3,500 dwellings on the market as of October 2011. In fact, of the many Melbourne suburbs now on property bubble notice, they all have one or more of the following features. Home to new housing estates, on the commuter belt about 40 minutes out of Melbourne, normally on a highway or a main train line, and particularly suburbs with a homemaker centre or large shopping centre. These include Sunshine West with its Australian Callaway Park development, Tarniet with over 3,000 dwellings, with its Heartland development and its Reflections development, Werribee with a massive 3,500 properties on the market, with its Vic Urban Riverwalk development, Wyndham Vale has over 1,400 properties on the market, including its Manor Lakes development. And in the northwest, suburbs like Bacchus Marsh with its Stonehill development and neighbouring Melton with its Toulon development. Northwestern suburbs of Gisborne and Hillside continue to pile up, while in Melbourne's north, suburbs of Roxburgh Park and Craigieburn have over 1,700 properties on the market, which includes Australand's Greenvale Gardens, and Vic Urban's Craigieburn development. Other suburbs in Melbourne's north where stock continues to pile up include Beveridge with their Mandalay development, Wallan with the Australand Wallara Waters development and also the Spring Ridge development, and Laylor which includes the Carlingford development. Next to this is Epping with Vic Urban's Aurora Epping North development and then suburbs Mernda and Doreen with a massive 3,700 properties on the market, which includes Stockland's Mernda Villages, Lendlease's Lorimar Development, Australand's Vantage Point, Orchard Grove, and Katandra Rise. Heading east, and smaller suburbs Yarra Glen, Seville, and Warburton continue to pile up, while further away from the city is Warrigal, with its northerly estate development and Waterford Rise development. Pakenham now has over 2,000 dwellings on the market with its lakeside Pakenham development and closer into Melbourne is suburbs Cranbourne and Botanic Ridge with over 3,000 dwellings on the market including its Botanic Ridge development and one of the largest homemaker centres in Melbourne. Finally, suburbs like Clyde North with its Australian Berwick Waters development and the Elmswood development in Keysborough continues to see stockpiling up. It could be argued that in these suburbs, it is precisely because of the new housing being released that they all take on the same pattern. But new housing is unlikely to be the sole reason why stock in an entire region like southwest Melbourne continues to pile up. Remember, while it may not be obvious to you on the street, not a sign to be cited. <laughs> more established housing is coming onto the market. And it's more likely stock in general is building up in the urban fringe regions of southwest Melbourne, southeast Melbourne, and north Melbourne, which is tipping the overall stock levels for Greater Melbourne towards excess supply.